Hey everybody, a video tonight on a story that is actually taken right out of the Bible. This is entitled The Day the Sun Stood Still, and this is bibliotechoplates.net, and I'll leave the link below. Now when I read the Bible, uh, I view it in many different ways. It can be very confusing. Some stories appear to be allegorical. Some seem to be taken right out of old Egyptian text. Uh, such as the Ten Commandments appear to be taken right out of the e Egyptian Book of the Dead, I believe chapter 125, if I remember correctly. Um, the whole Book of Genesis appears to be ripped right out of ancient Egyptian text. I believe the name Genesis actually means the genes of Isis. That is what I believe. And other stories, such as the Flood, and a few other things seem to match up with ancient recorded record from around the world. So, this story, this, The Day the Sun Stood Still. This comes from the book of Joshua. And it says, The Old Testament describes an event over Palestine when the Hebrew tribes were led into the battle of Beth Haran by Joshua. And the passage from the Bible says this, and he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is this not writ written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. So, if we don't look at this as allegorical and we throw out everything else and actually look at this as an event that actually happened, then you just have to use some common sense and say, well, the sun didn't stand still. It would actually have been the earth that stopped because the earth goes around and that's how we view the sun. So, if the sun over Gibeon was in the forenoon sky, it would have been night or very early morning in the western hemisphere. And if this was an event that actually happened, it wouldn't have been a local event, it would have to have been a worldwide event. And it's just interesting to see if there's any corroboration from the western hemisphere or any parts of the earth that describes such an event as happening. Well, there is a Mexican tr tradition recorded in the Nahua Indians that once in the remote past, the night did not end for a long time. And there is a friar Bernardino de Sahawagan, a Spanish scholar who came to the New World a generation after Columbus. He wrote that the American Aborigines told of a great catastrophe in which the sun had risen only a little way above the horizon and then stood still. It says these are but two of the many traditions from all parts of the world which refer to a disturbance in the Earth's orderly rotation. And I am doing this upload in segments tonight. I got some people bothering me here late at night, so just bear with me. It goes on to say this, it is conceivable that a large celestial body approaching the Earth could exert an extraction sufficiently powerful to slow down its turning and make the Sun appear to stop in the sky. The heads of comets are assumed to be composed of clusters of meteorites. If a comet were to come close to the Earth, it would be accompanied by meteors falling in a torrent. The Old in the Old Testament, two verses above the description in the book of Joshua of the sun standing still, it contains the following passage. As they fled before, from before Israel, and were going down to Beth Haran, the Lord cast down great stones upon them in Ezekiah, and they died. And it, then it goes on to talk about Dr. Emmanuel Velikovsky. And he wrote a book called Worlds in Collision. It's a fascinating book. But it was ridiculed. It was ripped just because people just couldn't uh, grasp uh, exactly what he was trying to say. And it just seemed crazy to people. So scholars ridiculed them. And even though the book is fascinating it was kind of turned down as a historical factual record. 
It says this, Dr. Emanuel Velikovsky presents a great body of evidence to show that about 1500 B.C. a comet did come close to the earth. This he places at the time of the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt, 52 years later, at the time of Joshua, the same comet returned. At both of these two meetings with the comet, in Dr. Velikovsky's words, According to the memory of mankind, the earth refused to play the chronometer by undisturbed rotation on its axis. And it goes on to say this. It says, This article is an attempt, necessarily condensed and incomplete, to offer a preview of Del Dr. Velikovsky's findings. It is impossible to give here any idea of the extent of the material he has assembled to substantiate his argument. In the descriptions which follow, for every piece of evidence mentioned, Worlds in Collisions, the first volume alone, contains scores more, and every statement in the book is supplied with numerous references. Dr. Velikovsky's work crosses so many of the jurisdictional boundaries of learning that few experts could check it against their own competence. The main body of evidence in the world in collisions is historical, and the details are drawn from, among other sources, the Old Testament, the Talmud, the Egyptian papyri, historical texts, traditions, the legends of Rome, Greece, Babylonia, Arabia, Persia, Indian, Tibet, Iceland, West Africa, Siberia, China, Japan, the Pacific Islands, Mexico, and Peru. Dr. Velikovsky Dr. describes the area of his investigations as anthropology in the broadest sense, concerning itself with the nature of the cosmos and its history. And it says, To the people of the earth below who witnessed the spectacle, the head of the comet and its tail seemed to be two separate bodies. The bright globe fought the crooked serpent and destroyed it, thus saving the world from further harm. It would be difficult, Dr. Velikovsky writes, to find a people or tribe on the earth that does not have the same motif at the very focus of its religious beliefs. It says, the great spark that flew between the comet and the earth is remembered as a bolt of lightning, placed in the hand of God who threw his thunderbolt at the world overwhelmed by, by water and fire. This is uh, identical to Zeus and the Greeks, um, other tales such as Odin of the Icelanders, there's Finnish tales, German tales, Persian stories, Babylonian and Hindus, all with the same story. It says the pattern of conflict between the comet and its tail takes almost identical form in the battles of Zeus with Typhon, Isis with Seth, Vishnu with the serpent, Indra with Rahu, and Marduk with Tiamat. A terrible comet was seen by the people of Ethiopian Egypt, wrote Pliny in his Natural History, to which Typhon, the king of that period, gave his name. It had a fiery appearance and was twisted like a coil, and it was very grim to behold. It was not really a star so much as what might be called a ball of fire. And Velikovsky, he wrote that this happened at the time of the Exodus, and the pillar of fire that the Israelites were actually following was actually a comet. And this comet produced very unusual things on earth and one was seas shifting in their basins and he kind of correlated this with the red sea party so that obviously created a lot of controversy and ridicule in his book but i found it very interesting so in conclusion you have this uh, incredible story from the bible that is pretty non-believable and just becomes it comes from the Bible, people will not believe it. But you got to find it interesting that there is these stories from these cultures from all around the world that seem to corroborate this event actually happening. So I just find that very fascinating. It's not something, you know, I'm saying that it actually happened, but when you have the evidence, you have to sit up and take notice. And to conclude, it says on this website, 
T.W. Doan relates the following facts concerning these traditions. There are many stories similar to this to be found among other na nations of antiquity. We have examples in Orphic hymns, Indian legends, uh, the Buddhists have uh, such a story of this happening, the Chinese had a legend of the sun standing still, and a legend was found among ancient Mexicans to the effect that one of their holy persons commanded the sun to stand still and the command was obeyed. In the ancient Chinese writings, there is a legend of a long day. The Incas of Peru and the Aztecs of Mexico have a like record. And there is a Babylonian and, per and Persian legend of a day that was miraculously extended. Another section of China contributes an account of, the, of a day that was miraculously prolonged in the reign of Emperor Yao. And Herodotus recounts that the priests of Egypt showed him their temple records, and there he read a strange account of a day that was twice the natural length. And it says in the Mexican annals, a history of the empire of Culhuacan and Mexico, written in Nahu Indian in the 16th century, it is related that during a cosmic catastrophe that occurred in the remote past, the night did not end for a long time. So, once again, this is a story from the Bible, the book of Joshua, the day the sun stood still. I find it very interesting that there is text from around the world, many different cultures corroborating this event. I'm not saying it happened, but I'm just saying it's very interesting that we have these similar stories from around the world. Hope you thought this was interesting. Have a nice day and a nice weekend.